everyone. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's good to be on live on this morning with you guys. Glad to have you on tuning in to Words of Christ Palm Sunday online. And this is just a great experience, something different, different, something new. But nevertheless, God is still with us. Amen. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Go ahead and like and share and share your videos. Have watch parties. Share them in groups with different people. You may have friends you might be in groups with. Share the video in groups. And let's see what the Lord is going to say on today. I hope you guys had a blessed and prosperous day. I pray strength into you guys on today. I, I pray strength. I feel, I feel um, that there needs to be some strength released into the hearts and minds of the people. So be ye strengthened in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's just go to the throne room of grace on today. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you and we just praise you on this morning, Father God. We magnify your name and we exalt you. We thank you for you are Lord and you are King of Kings. You are the Almighty God. And as we come to celebrate Palm Sunday on this morning, we thank you that your presence is in the midst. I ask that you touch every heart and every mind that's on this call. Jesus, we thank you that you are Lord. And I ask you as I open my mouth that you speak, that I decrease by you increase. I ask that you have your way. I ask that you would grant me revelation and knowledge in Jesus' name. Open the ears of the healer so they can hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So good morning. So before I go a little further, I do have a word for you guys. Um, For those of you guys that joined the prayer call last night, it was uh, spontaneous at the last minute. I was in here reading, uh, preparing for today. Um, and of course, I'm not coming with that sermon that I thought I would come with last night. You know, he always switches me in the morning. Um, but um, last night when, when he, he gave me the unction to pray, um, he had he was dealing me with the, the family, family members coming into the kingdom, the promises of God. And so today, the word of the Lord, he releases that his promises are so so do not give up hope. Don't throw in the towel. Don't get discouraged. God said his promises are still standing because great is his faithfulness. God is faithful when we're not faithful. He is still faithful. Amen. So great is his faithfulness towards us on this morning. And I wanted you to know that his promise to you is yes and amen. Whatever he promised you, it shall come to pass. Whatever he's spoken, shall he not do it? He shall perform those things which he has spoken you will see a performance of those things that he has spoken. So I pray that you be encouraged and that you be strengthened. Because his promises are still standing on your behalf. His promises are still standing on your behalf. Great is his faithfulness to you. So that is a prophetic word that he's given to the body of Christ. And I pray that you receive it in spite of what you may see going on around you. His promises are still standing. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk a little bit about Palm Sunday on today that's ushering us into the place of Passover. Um, but Passover is coming up on this Wednesday. Um, so um, I want to talk to you a little bit about Palm Sunday on today. Um, and I want to take your attention to Zechariah um, 9 and 9. Um, Zechariah 9 and 9. And so as we get ready to go there, it says, uh, chapter 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon, I'm going to say a donkey, and upon a colt of the fall of a donkey. Amen. And so that's the prophecy that was fulfilled 900 years. That prophecy was spoken 900 years before the fulfillment of it. So, listen. Sometimes God speaks and things don't happen for a long time. But the thing about it, though, if he's spoken, it shall come to pass. Amen? So, no matter how long it takes, it does not mean that God is slack concerning his promises because it looked like it took a long time coming. That prophecy was nine year, 900, I'm sorry, 900 years later it was fulfilled 
900 years later, it was fulfilled. Um, so God has spoken. And by that time, can you imagine um, that prophecy being filled and they can't see it? They don't, they're, they're like way out, like, I just don't even know how this is going to happen. I just can't even put my mind to think how that's going to come to pass. But nevertheless, God is faithful and just to watch over the world. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. It shall not return to me for it. It will accomplish what it's sent to do. And if it speak 900 years later, I say this to say this to you. But those of you that have prayers that are lingering in the atmosphere, some of you now are walking in the fulfillment prayers of your, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles that prayed for you as a baby. And they might have left and went to glory, but the word was released here on the earth. And because of the word that was released here on the earth, it's still waiting to take a seat at the appointed time in your life. So some of us are walking in prophetic uh, words that was prophesied through our family generations. Um, and our, from our grandparents to our great-grandparents, and now we're walking in them. So nevertheless, even if you don't see it and you leave here to go to glory, anything that was spoken over your children or your children's children or your family gener generation line, God is going to be faithful to watch over that that word is performed. Now, I say this to you to update you on this. If he's giving you a prophetic word, um, that word will not fall to the ground, nor will it linger. You will see that word come to pass in the land of the living. Amen? Amen. You'll see it come to pass. So, nevertheless, this is a prophecy that was spoken that our King, our Savior, will come. And he will be riding on a donkey. Not a horse, but a donkey. So, I want to draw your attention to John 12 and 12. Uh, John 12, chapter 12, verse 12 through 14, where we see that the problem, the prophecy is coming to pass. And as I go, okay, so John 12, chapter 12, verse 24. On the next day, much people who were coming to the feast. Now look, the feast was the Passover. They were all going to the feast of the Passover. When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, their excitement um, their excitement is understandable. They were excited. They were joyous. They were like, yes, the king is coming because they all knew about the prophecies because one thing about them, they taught their children. They taught their children the word of God. They taught the children the, pro the prophecies that were supposed to come to pass. So this was great expectancy. Even though this was prophesied 900 years ago, now they're saying, we're getting ready to see the fulfillment of the prophecy come to pass. So they were so excited that Jesus was coming, and he was coming during the Passover. And said they took branches of palms, and they went forth to meet him. And, and okay, they went forth to meet him, and he cried, and cried, Hosea, and blessed be the king of Israel who come in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat there on at it as it was written. As it was written, as it was written. Once God said it is written, it's a done deal. Now the beauty of it is that here Jesus comes. So wait, first let's get to this. This is Palm Sunday, which they call the first Sunday of the first day of the holy day of the week, leading all the way up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. So here we are, uh, the first day that starts the Holy Week. And we all honor the week, of the, which we call Holy Week. But it was not just a Holy Week. This is also the first day the, of the 10th day of Nisan, which is the Jewish community would go pick their lamb for the Passover. Now, you know they had to pick out a lamb for a Passover. So this will be the day. He enters in the city the day that they go pick a lamb because now he is the lamb. And so they ain't got to go pick no lamb. They're rejoicing because can you imagine how they had to, how much money first they had to spend on lambs that were expensive. They had to find a new lamb every year during Passover. And they had to find one that was out of blem didn't have no blemish to it. Can you imagine how many lambs they might have went through trying to find a lamb for sacrifice? Their sacrifice has just entered the east gate. Just came in. And sometimes when you read in the Bible about the East Gate, it represents miracles. Um, the East Gate and jurisdiction. Um, the East Gate. So Jesus knew what he was doing. He was coming in where he had jurisdiction to release miracles. Because they was getting ready to see a miracle. They was about to see something they ain't never seen before. And so here we go to look at that now their celebration come because this is the Passover. 
This is the Passover. The Jews were required to go to Jerusalem three times a week to celebrate the feast. The three feasts were the Passover, Pentecostal, and the Feast of Tabernacle that they would go to Jerusalem to celebrate. So you, can you imagine that each each um, each year of the Passover, here they come in to celebrate, but there's something different about this Passover. There's something different. Um, it's not Passover as usual. Now the game is about to change forever. So everybody's excited because they're about to see prophecy fulfilled. And so what I want to tell you today, get excited because you're getting ready to see prophecy fulfilled. They were excited because he was coming. They knew the promises was going to be fulfilled. But he didn't even get to the cross yet. But they already knew that the Savior has come. And then when they began to wave their palm leaves and which represent victorious leader, they knew what they were doing. They were saying, he's going to be victorious. He's our victorious leader. We, we have no choice but to win now because victory is now coming into our hands. We have suffered long enough. We were under the curse. We was under the law. But now our Savior has come. So as they wave with the palm leaves, they're saying, yes, victory has come. This is a leader that's undefeatable. This is a leader that death is not going to be able to hold down. This is a leader that's going to snatch death by his neck. And he's going to go to hell and snatch the keys. So they were excited and they was rejoicing because they knew that the king was coming. Prophecy was being fulfilled. Amen. Hosanna, which means, um, so Hosanna, when they were screaming Hosanna, they were saying, save us. Like they were saying, save us. Hosanna means save in the Hebrew language. So they were saying, Jesus, save us, save us. They knew it was time for their savior to come. And that prophecy was get ready to be fulfilled. That he was coming at the time of sacrifice and that he was going to be the lamb that was going to go to the cross. This is where we get the Good Friday come in. You know, they says Good Friday. Um, they call it the Holy Day of the Week because this is his entrance into the gate. This is pre preparing him for the Passover feast, which Jesus do. He did celebrate the Passover feast. And now he's coming on a Friday, the day of crucifixion. That's how we got a Good Friday because he was going to the cross. Now, as he became... As he went into the cross, the game started changing. Because now everything that the naysayers were saying, everything they fought against from happening, everything they tried to stop from happening, they did everything to try to stop Jesus from doing what he was called and sent to do. And it came not avoid. Everything that the enemy is sending your way to stop what God has promised to come in your, your life is going to become not avoid. This is the Passover. The Passover time is coming and we get ready to not only pass over from death to life, but we get ready to pass over to new beginnings. Because one thing about the blood do, it carries new life. Some of us are going to operate in new life. You don't know that we're being detoxed right now. God is detoxing. He's changing our mindsets right now. He's changing the way we're thinking right now. He's imparted into us for our new life. Listen, this thing right here is getting ready to be changed. The blood carries life. Amen. So here they was exchanged. They had uh, the lamb's blood, which was temporary, that had no voice. The lamb's blood had no power. It was just a representative of seeing the blood because that was the requirements of the father. But now we're getting the blood that's alive, that's active, that never, ever, 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 ever lose its power that speaks today. Now that we see this blood works. This blood is internal. So now the game is changing. This became a new life for them. Old things began to pass away in their lives. They were caught in tradition, mindsets, being under the taskmaker. They couldn't make decisions on their own. They wasn't free to live. They didn't, they didn't, couldn't flow in their ministries or anything the game changes now because new life came when jesus came and when new life came it freed them now they didn't have to go to the priest they said now we don't have to go to the priest and and not only that we need to find a holy priest because just because the priest don't mean they were holy priests he says now we have the high priest now jesus become our high priest right so now the game changes for them now they don't go got, got to go to the priest they can go to jesus for themselves you see the freedom the yoke of bondage that's broken that's what god is doing in this passover season he's destroying the yoke of bondage 
the yoke of bondage, things that held you back, those voices that kept you in captivity. God says new life for you because I come to do away with that. That's the old wineskin. I'm bringing you into new wineskin. Some of us been an old wineskin from tradition, from the raising up our families because this is what our mothers and our grandmothers are doing. But God says I'm breaking that because I'm not there no more. I moved on and I'm ahead and you got to catch up to time. Now, you know, everything is changing with times. TV's changing. Computers are changing. Um, phones are changing. If you don't catch up with time, you are left behind. So you can't, and the same thing in the room of the spirit. You can't use old wineskin in new wineskin for this new generation. And you have to be tuned in. And that's why he said, I give you the Holy Spirit, right? And he says, and guess what? Now the Holy Spirit is going to operate through you. Now you're going to be able to do the things I did. Now you're going to be able to operate in signs and wonders. You're going to not have to marvel at no man on TV or woman of God on TV that's performing miracles because I'm the same God that's in them, that's in you. And I will breathe through you. I will move through you. I will operate through you. I will bring miracles through you. Let me tell you something. Old wineskin says only the miracles and the anointing flow through the prophets, the priests, and the kings. But now, New Testament say it flows through every believer. Now, these people was getting ready to say, we're about to see what it is to be used by God. We're about to see because there's new blood coming. There's a new sacrifice that got life to us. We're going to know what it is to feel the presence of God, for God to talk to us. And see, they didn't know that because they had to go to the seer in the Old Testament. They had to go to the seer every time they wanted a word from the Lord. But now in New Testament, you ain't got to seek no prophet out because you got the greatest prophet on the inside of you. Jesus is the testimony of prophecy and he is the greatest prophet that ever walked this earth and he is on the inside of you. You don't have to seek out a prophet. You don't have to seek out a prophet. Now when they said come to the seers, that's Old Testament because they didn't have access to the father. But now we have access to him because of the blood of the lamb and because of Jesus Christ. We ain't got to go seek no man out because all we got to do is call on him in the time of trouble. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door shall be open. He is saying, listen, I've done away with that old. I'm bringing you into the new and there is no bondage to it. And guess what else he said? There's no limitations in me. He says, there's no ceiling to me. He says, you can go as far as you want to go. And it's up to you how far you want to go into God. It's up to you how much you want to access God. It's up to you how much he wants to work through you. You don't need man's approval for that. All you need to do is get on your face and begin to seek the Lord for what you want. And let me tell you this, this ain't the hour nor the season that ain't God is going to allow any man to stop what he has called in your life. That's Old Testament. That's old wineskins. That's old traditional mindsets that is operating today. It's still operating today. Amen. And God's saying, I'm trying to pull you out of the old into the new. Into the new. And I'm going to tell you this. God has an anointing that he has released in the earth today. That even the young people who are not sold out to God is starting to catch the revelation of Jesus Christ. And they didn't get it in a brick and mortar building. They got it standing on the streets where, where somebody that was Holy Ghost filled was able to tap into the mindset. Because everybody's not coming to church. You guys already know that. God, God says that, you know, the church is in us and he take us out of the four walls. So what is he doing even in that? He's showing us who we are as the church. He's taking us out of the four corners of the of the um, building and he will still use us in the building. He'll still bring us into the building because he built church. Don't get me wrong. For the fivefold ministry, he built church and he built them for the people to come and sit and fellowship and eat. You come to church, you get your training. Church is your training ground. This is where you come to get impartation, where you come to get the strength. You get your filling. It's like your gas station. Like you go and eat. You go to the gas station, you fill up and what you do, you go about doing all that you want to do. You drive everywhere. You, you go to anywhere you want to. That's the same thing when you come to church. You get filled up so you can go out all over the world to get to tell about Jesus, to go out and begin to explain him, go out and show his works, go out and be a performance of those things that he's spoken. Let it come through you. 
So we thank God for Palm Sunday because it's the entrance <laughs> into the Passover, the Passover land. So listen, when they the Jews were going to Jerusalem every year, they were going to celebrate that God protected them for all 10 plagues. God had passed them over. Then none of those plagues came not to their dwelling place. It wasn't just the, the blood on the doorpost. Every plague, they were in the midst of it. Every plague, they were sitting right there in the enemy's camp with every plague coming all around them. And it came nigh to their dwelling place. It came nigh to the dwellers because they always dealt in the secret place of God. They were the ones that were crying unto God in the time of trouble. And God heard their cry and sent them a deliverer. Now, I need, I want to know, do you need God to deliver anything in your life? Because if you cry, he already sent the deliverer. Deliverer is just going to go ahead and deliver what he was sent to do. And that was to break the yoke and set the captive to go free. Now, I've been crying unto the Lord for the last couple of days. And God said, you shall see a performance of those things that I've spoken. But but sometimes God got to quiet us down, sit us down, that we don't be so busy. When times we're supposed to be intercessing, we're out and about. We're at the movies. We're getting our nails done. We're getting our hair done. We're at the mall. We in, uh, we in the restaurants eating. We're doing all these things. And we're saying, and we're not giving God any of this time. But yet we said we have no time for God. And God says, I'm getting ready to show you. You're going to have a whole bunch of time for me. Because when I take away those distractions from you, I can get your attention. I can speak to you and then you will see my my word come to pass in your life because then this is the time that you will begin to call God on his word this is the time that you'll begin spending and seeking God and talking to God and then you'll find out how good and pleasant it is to fellowship with the Lord amen and then you'll begin to feel how good it is to feel when your belly is full if some of you have not noticed this um sometimes when you're hungry you think you're hungry. You say, I just can't get full. I just keep eating and eating. I can't get full. That's not because your physical man is hungry. Your spiritual man is hungry. And you're not feeding him. Because the minute you start feeding him, he starts getting full, full, full. So God says, you know, I have to shut the restaurants down because um, um, you, you think that it's in the food. Um, I need to give you some spiritual food. So I need to sit you down. I need to close you in and I need to begin to feed you. And for those of you say that you can't hear me, as I close you in and shut you off from the voices of the world, huh? you'll begin to hear my voice again. My whispers start getting louder to you. You'll start feeling my tug when I was tugging you. And you and guys, and you're saying, oh my gosh, God said I was doing this the whole time. But you couldn't hear me because you was being washed out by the voice of the world, the spirit of the world because you were yielding to every distraction. You know what distractions come when God says, um, I want you to come and set um, some still away time with me. You said, I'm going to, right? And you purpose in your mind, as soon as I get off of work, I'm going straight home. I'm going to go straight into my prayer class. I'm going straight into my work because you're thinking about God throughout the day. So you're thinking about when you get time. But when you leave work, the phone rings. Hey, I was calling what you want to do. Are you, um, you want to go sit and meet me for dinner? And then you go, oh yeah, I am hungry. Oh yeah, I can go. Um, yeah, I just get in my word when I when I when I get back. Spirit of distraction, you yielded to it because God spoke to you first. He said, "Come and commune with me. Come and have dinner with me." Right. So by the time you got done eating dinner, guess what happened? You got the itis. And now when you will go home to spend time with God, you done took a nap. You done fell asleep. And then you try to get up to go press in, and you can't because you missed the appointed time. You missed the time where the water was troubled. When he calls you at that time is when the water is troubled. You can't put God on hold. You can't put him on hold. You got to stop right then and there. And I'm going to tell you this. I remember I was driving in my car. And the Lord started speaking to me. And this is a couple years and years and years ago. The Lord started speaking to me. And he says, as you begin to bless me, as you begin to praise me, these things will break. We know that praise is a weapon of warfare, right? Praise break yokes. I couldn't wait. I was feeling fire in my belly. I pulled my car over on the side of the road and ran down the highway. Got back in front of my car and began to dance and praise God. Some people, some people beeped at me because they understand what I was doing. But one thing I realized, I was in the point of time. So I said, I can't wait till I get home because I might miss that time. 
I need to stop what I'm doing right now and give him glory. And so what if you look fool? He said, I'll take the foolish things of the world to confine the wise. Oh, so you going to people might say, oh, that's crazy. There ain't no God in that. They can't tell you what is God when they don't even know God for themselves. They know them by the tradition or they got the grandmom stories. They got other people's stories, but they ain't got their own stories. So they can't tell you what is God and what's not God. He says, and then when they do, you begin to tell, hey, you take the foolishness. So I'm glad I look foolish. I'm glad I look foolish because that tells me that I was in the right standing with God. Because he said he will, he will take the foolish things of the world to confine the wise. Amen. So they were excited because the game is changing. He's entering in through the east gate where he got jurisdiction. And in this jurisdiction, he's going to perform miracles. But this is what's happening. He was coming in with jurisdiction in the east gate where, where it was known for miracles. And you know why? He came in that way where it was known for miracles. Because he says, now I'm about to release unto you. What is in me to perform miracles that is getting ready to be released in you? Now, this I'm coming in this gate because now what's in me is about to be in you. Now, I'm not the only one performing miracles. You're going to perform miracles and you're going to teach your children to perform miracles. And you're going to teach other disciples how to perform miracles because it's being released unto you. Now, in the biblical days, we saw the, the, the disciples doing it, right? But now it's going to be released to the world. They were limited. They were limited because they were on foot. Um, they didn't have they didn't have access to the whole world. So the gospel wasn't being preached to the whole world. It was over in over um in Jerusalem, in Israel, over there. But it wasn't over here in Philadelphia, in Norristown, in Jersey, in North Carolina. He says, but when I go and the Holy Spirit comes. He's going to release it all to you. So this starts the process that now my anointing will be unlimited to the world. It starts the process. This is the leading up to the resurrection. This is leading up to the crucifixion. This is leading up to it. So they're excited before they even seen it because they know that it's going to come to pass. So how many of you are excited without seeing it to know what Jesus spoke to you is get ready to come to pass. The signs are here. And what happened was they saw the sign of the coming of Christ. They saw the signs that he was entering in. Right now, we're seeing the signs of the coming of Christ. We see the signs that Jesus is close. And I had someone say to me, well, I've been hearing it since a child. Well, yeah, but the signs of the time weren't then as we were kids like they are now. And we are definitely seeing the time of the Christ, of Christ. And so what I want to say to you today, remember this, the blood is still speaking on your behalf. The blood has a voice and is speaking on your behalf. Now, I want to give you two scriptures because I want you to go back to the scriptures as well. It's 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. It says, Christ has become our Passover lamb. And that's what they were excited was because he came on the day they had to choose their Passover, to choose the lamb for the Passover. He came as the lamb of God to them on the day and they chose him to be their Passover. They didn't have to go pick a lamb because the lamb showed up to where they were and he was without spot or blemish and he became their sacrifice. So guess what? They were excited because their lamb has found them. They didn't have to go find the lamb and they had chose him to be the sacrifice when they waved their palm leaves, when they began to shout, save us, Hosanna, when they began to rejoice, they were saying, we choose you as our lamb of God. We choose you as our lamb of God. And he became the sacrifice because they chose him. They chose to accept it and they chose him. Other, My other scripture I want to give to you is Hebrew 4 and 14. It talks about Jesus becoming our high priest. And so, and, and it talk, it's, it's showing you, it's doing away with that old. And a lot of times, you know, the Bible says confession is good for the soul, right? And confession is good for the soul. But a lot of times, you don't have to come and confess your faults to me. If you do, okay, thank you. But guess what? You're not obligated to do that. You're not obligated to confess uh, to man. You're obligated to confess to Christ your faults. Uh, for he already knows him. And that's where your repentance comes through him. Confess your faults to him. Now, the scripture do say confess your faults one to another. That's fine. Confess your faults. But what I'm saying is you don't have to um, go to a priest to be forgiven of your sins. And I'm, I'm considered as a priest. So you don't have to come to me or anyone else to be forgiven for your sins. When you go to Christ and ask him for forgiveness, forgiveness is your portion. Is your portion. That's why there's no condemnation of those who walk in the spirit and not act 
um, after the flesh. So I pray that you will be blessed. And I'm excited about the Passover coming. And I'm telling you this. They were celebrating. They were celebrating that the plagues have passed them by. This is why we can celebrate. And God gave us a word. God gave us a word that the plague would not come nigh to our dwelling place. Now, there's a lot of threats that's come back, um, come to us. And, and look like it's all around us. But he said, um, it will not come nigh to our, our dwelling place. Not nigh to our dwelling place. It don't matter what it look like, right? So we should be celebrating and rejoicing because it's passing us by. It's passing us by. So that's why a lot of people you hear saying over and over that um, that they feel like this plague that we're, that's over us now, that's in the land, uh, will be over during Passover time. Well, Passover time is Wednesday. Um, and I don't know. God can do anything. God can do anything. But one thing about it, though, if it ain't over by Wednesday, guess what? It still passed us by. It still covered us. It still passed us by. So it doesn't matter if it's still here Wednesday. It still won't be near our dwelling place. Amen? It still will not be near our dwelling place. So for those of those that are prophesied in that, so be unto them. It ain't prophesied by Apostle Delmarva Johnson because the Lord never spoke that to me. Amen? Um, he, he told me it was be longer than what we thought and what we anticipated or what the president thought. And then we saw them coming and pushing time back after he released that word. They kept pushing time back. But God is doing it work, so he's not rushing it to get us out of quarantine because God wants us in quarantine. He wants to renew our minds and give us new mindsets. He wants us there. So he's not going to rush us out. Now, I know you say, oh my gosh. So I hear people say, I can't take this cabin fever. I can't take it no more. I feel like I'm pulling out my hair. I thought the same thing. I'm telling you the truth. I said, God, I can't, I can't go to jail. I said, I don't know how to do this. I said, God, and I have access to go in and out my front door, all through my house. I can go to bed when I want to wake up and eat when I want. I can do all of that. I said, um, uh, house arrest. I don't know how they do that. I said, because really we're on house arrest. I said, uh, the Holy Ghost arrested us. And I was like, God, I just don't know how. Right? But nevertheless, the Lord says, your flesh can't take it. And I'm crucifying the flesh. Where we could not crucify our own flesh, God is crucifying the flesh because the flesh can't get what it wants right now. It can go to the movies on Fridays and then go out to dinner. It can uh, go um, do all these other things it want to do, go on vacations and all this stuff. The flesh is detoxing, y'all. The flesh is dying because we didn't know how to kill the flesh. So God says, I'm going to help you kill the flesh. I'm going to take what the enemy meant for harm, and I'm going to turn it and work it for you good, and I'm going to kill your flesh. Because when I kill your flesh, it'll give you patience, and it will teach you how to sit and listen to the voice of God to enlarge. And for those of you who didn't have no patience, he just gave it to you. He just gave it to you. He's giving it to you. He's giving it to you now. So what God is doing, he's crucifying the flesh. So he's not rushing He's not rushing. Now, if he releases it, so be it. But I feel the Lord is still working. He's still working. He's he's delivering some people. Some people are actually getting delivered right now. Um, the Lord is bringing these. De na, 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 see. Mm. He's detoxing them because he had to separate them from friends that of influence that he didn't want them around. So he had to quarantine them without social gathering. Come on here, Holy Ghost. Because the social gathering was tinting the ear gates, dropping seeds in the minds, causing them to be confused. But God says, now I'm clearing the ears, the mindset that you'll be able to know when I'm speaking to you. With clarity. God says, you're going to come out of this on a supernatural high. You're going to be elevated in spiritual rooms that you have never been elevated before. And, and God says, I'm even opening myself up to you even the more. I can't wait for your testimonies. And if you got any testimonies, I need y'all to share them with me. Um, e um, email me at Pastor Damarva. I want to hear what the Lord is doing in your life. Because some of you guys are have spiritual awakenings happening even now. Even now, even now. 
So I advise you, keep a notebook of everything that's happened during quarantine. What revelation did you get from God? What did you hear from God? What vision did you get? What did you dream about? What was revealed to you? What was exposed to you? Because at the end of the day, it looked like 2020 is a bad year for us, but it's a good year. It's a good year for us in spite of what it looks like because you get ready to come out stronger than what you went in. You're going to come out stronger than what you in. So I pray. Na, 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 na. So I pray, I pray that you bless. I hear the Lord says, I'm even purifying. I'm hearing the Lord says, even I'm purifying your blood system. Some of you, your blood system. Um, if people was dealing with leukemia or anything of blood disorders, um, the Lord says, this, this Passover season. He's going to give you new blood. There's new life in the blood. He said, he said, this was this Passover. This right here was new life. So he's going to put new, new blood in your system that has new life, purifying it, purifying. I even see where God's purifying a liver condition, purifying, cleansing, it's cleansing, it's cleansing, it's cleansing. Some things can make it cleanse, detox. You'll see. I'm waiting on your testimonies. You caught it. I'll wait on your testimonies. A lot of things we will get, um, be, be blessed with um, physical things, but this right here is really your major blessing is coming spiritually. You're going to get some blessing spiritually. You're going to get some doors open. You're going to have a new attitude. You're going to have a new walk. You're going to have a new way of you speaking. You're going to have a new everything. By the time you get out of this, it's called a makeover. Some of you are going to literally walk in the things that you birthed. Some of you are birthing now. Some of you have birthed now. And you're lit by when you come out, you're going to come out like, boom. People go like, where that came from? Boom, where that came from? Because now you have the time to sit to hear what the Spirit is saying to you and have time to listen to the guide directions of the Lord. So I pray that you were blessed today. I pray that you were blessed today. WOC, we are celebrating the Passover still. On Wednesday, um, at 6 o'clock, we will be on our group page. I understand some of you have to work, but I must do it before the sun goes down to start our Passover, and we will have communion. So after this video, I will be on our group page, and I will give you a little bit more instructions on that because the blood is speaking, and the plague shall pass us by. I wish I had some palm leaves because I promise you now, I will be all down my driveway, all down um, my cola sack like this. Fanning my palm trees because Hosanna came to save us. The king rules. He is Lord of Lords and he is king of kings. And he has entered in. So he's entered in. And now is the time to rejoice for what the Lord is bringing into our lives, you guys. So be blessed and be prosperous in the things of God. Let your mind be prosperous. Let your mind be steadfast and unmovable on him. If the news is putting fear on you, stop watching it. If you can, if you guys who can handle that are intercessors, then you need to watch it so you can pray. Because one thing I have also been seeing, I've been seeing the hand of God alter things that they put on the news and I've been seeing prayer alter it. You know, so we, we're in control here, you guys. We are in control. He says, I give, I give men um, dominion over the earth, right? He said, I give it to man. He said, so we have dominion and we can alter things in prayer. I've seen prayer alter some things. And so we pray according to the will of God and watch him do it and watch him do it. So I pray that you were blessed. I pray that you bless. blessed. I can't wait to get back in to our sanctuary, but I have to tell you, this has pushed me out of my comfort zone. So this, I like me sitting here on the video talking to you guys is way out of my comfort zone. Um, if I know I'm being taped or filmed, I lose my train of thought. I start stuttering. I can't get my things together. I can't read my notes. I'm like, and I don't really preach with notes. So I'm, I'm used to being a preacher that's up and just flowing. And now that I have to sit here and I just, it stretched me out of my comfort zone. The Lord has sent the word to me this year that he was going to stretch me. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. When I tell you, he said he was going to, he stretched me in everything 
he can think of stretching me. And I say, if you don't stretch me, I ain't gonna make it. Oh my gosh, if you don't stretch me, I go. All I can think of the word, he stretched me. Oh my gosh, put your trust in him. Your trust is in God. Oh my gosh, things that you wouldn't think that he would allow, he has allowed. Things that you wouldn't think that he would done, he has done. I'm saying, my God, but at the same time, he's blessing my socks off too. So. You gotta take you gotta take the good with the bad because he said he's stretching me right and so he has to stretch it so i say to you as the lord says to me he's stretching you too <laughs> he's stretching you too right and so let him stretch you so this has definitely pushed me into things that the lord was having me to do like podcasts like i didn't do them um and he was pushing me to do my podcasts and now this make it simple everything i needed to video at home i had to get it i was pushed into it um i kept pushing things to the side it's pushing me into purpose amen and so let god push you into purpose i'm birthing a new form of ministry right now i'm i'm i'm, I'm and i'm excited about doing it so i'm excited now about getting on my lives um even though i still feel like oh i'm excited about getting on it it's pushing me and i'm just teaching me some things let the Lord teach you some things while you're quarantining. This ain't a bad thing. Rejoice. Um, for those of you that have been locked in the house, I do suggest that you go outside your front door to your back door and get some fresh air. Breathe in. Breathe out. And let the glory of the Lord rise among you. So I pray that you've been blessed. Um, I do ask you guys that if you um, are led to sow into our ministry, those of you who are part of our church, we thank you for continue to pay your tithes and your offering. We do have a Giveify link. You can sow to us on Giveify, uh, Warriors of Christ. Um, you can sow during our website, www.warriorsofchristchurch.org. Um, also, we have a cash app. I don't know what's going on with that one, though. But we do have a cash app. It's dollar sign W-O-C-E-E-E. -E -E. Um, we had text to give. I don't think I have that information. Text to give. I do. Okay, so let me give you the text to give. It's on the it's on the screen. Amen. So if you look on the screen, you'll see where it's text to give. So thank you for sowing your seed because one thing about it though, this is good ground, fertile ground. And I promise you, you will see a harvest. Now, you guys that are part of our ministry, get ready for your Passover offering as well. You guys that wanted to partake with Passover with us, let us know. Um and you can partake in our Passover offering. And so we'll look forward to seeing you guys back soon. And um, I will be on live. I will be back on live at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. I can't wait to 8.30, so we'll do 6 o'clock. I pray that you've been blessed. I'm looking forward to hearing you guys who have been following us. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing us. Send us a message on this group page if you want, on this fan page. We would like to connect with you. And I pray that you are blessed. So let me pray for you. Um, this evening before we hang up. So, Father, we just thank you and we just praise you, God, for everyone that's online on today, Father God. I thank you, God, that you anoint them afresh, oh God. I thank you that they have an ear to hear what you have to say. I thank you, God, for let us, let our hands as we lift it up, be at the palms in our hands to wave unto you, Father God. We thank you for coming in, setting us free. We thank you for new life in the blood. You said new life shall come, Father God. We thank you that old things are passing away, God, and all things have become new in our lives, God. Thank you for spiritual growth and increase, oh God. Thank you for financial blessings upon your people, Father. I ask you that you release a miracle, Father God, in their bank accounts, Father God. Let it be the overflow. Thank you for this time of harvest that you have given unto the saints, God. Harvesting of souls, God. Har harvesting of finances, God. Harvesting of financial growth, Father God. Spiritual growth, Father God. New mindsets, God. New connections, Father God. I thank you that they're coming through now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. Say, I Thank you for doing it now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. And as you guys are sharing this video, if anyone who's listening has not saved, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I don't care where you've been or what you've done, he has forgiven you. Do not let the enemy hold anything over your head. And if you're saying, I want a new walk with God, I want old things to pass away in my life, I just can't do it. I'm just stuck in the middle. Um, no matter what I try to do, I just can't get from this point to this point. I want, I want to introduce you to Christ who is the yoke destroyer. He'll do what you cannot do. He's able to save you from yourself. He will save you from yourself of destruction. And so Romans 9 and 10, 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart 
that Jesus raised from the dead, you will be saved. So I'm going to say after me, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess my faults unto you. I ask that you blood wash me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Jesus who raised the dead and I need a savior and I welcome you into my heart. And if you have done that, then you are saved and we want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. And if you've done that, heaven is rejoicing with you right now. And I want to hear from you if salvation came to you. I want to hear from you. And and so I pray that you were blessed. I'll meet you guys soon again. I love you. I love you. I love you guys. I miss you so much. I love you. And all my viewers. Love you guys. And even those that are peeking on my... No, I'm not going to say that. And guess what? I love my enemies. To my enemies, I bless you for joining on my live today. And I pray that the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name.